Dear students, let us now start the second phase of our discussion on interpolation. In our first phase of lectures, we have already discussed what is interpolation, what are interpolating polynomials and derived a few number of polynomial interpolation formula such as Newton's forward difference formula, Newton's backward difference formula, some formula from Gauss interpolation formula for uh, forward difference and backward difference for even number of points, for odd number of points and from them uh, we have derived Starling formula and Bessel formula. But all these formula are related to the uh, table in which the uh, variable x that which is called the nodes are equispaced. For this equispaced nodes we have Newton's interpolation formula, forward interpolation formula is applicable when the unknown value of x lies at the beginning of the table, uh, we use Newton's backward interpolation formula when the unknown value of x lies at the end of the table and we use Starling and Bessel's formula when x lies in the middle of the table. But let us now go to more general type of interpolation formula. We have given some outline in our first lecture about the general type of interpolation formula known as Lagrange's interpolation formula. In this Lagrange's interpolation formula, the x size that is the nodal points are not necessarily to be equispaced. They may be equally spaced, they may be not equally spaced. In both cases, Lagrange's interpolation formula can be used. How to get this interpolation formula? Which we suppose that the function y is equal to fx is a function belonging to x0, x1 which is continuously differentiable for n plus 1 times. We construct a polynomial of degree at most n. We have remember that we have n plus 1 interpolating points. So we construct a polynomial of degree at most n in the form given in phi x. Phi x contains the unknown coefficients a0, a1, a2 up to a n that is total number of unknown coefficients are n plus 1. Now this n plus 1 unknown coefficients will be determined uh, by satisfying the interpolating condition phi xi that is yi, i is equal to 0 to n. We should note that y xi and yi are the corresponding interpolating points in which no two xi's are equal that is xi is not equal to yi uh, sorry xi is not equal to xj uh, for i not equal to j. Then putting in the formula uh, x is equal to x0, x1, x2 up to xn successively in phi x and equating to y0, yi, yn the coefficients ai can be determined as shown in the table. This is the general formula for a n so that x n becomes this equation. This is the interpolating polynomial for, due to Lagrange. This is known as the Lagrange's interpolating polynomial and this can be put in the simple form phi x is equal to summation i is equal to 0 to n l i x into y i where l i x is given by this expression. This is very important expression. This expression is called Lagrange's fundamental polynomial or Lagrange's function or Lagrange's basic polynomial. Dear students, please keep it mind that this is very important polynomial which will be used in our future discussions and many other formulation including numerical integration etc. So please keep it in your memory. Lix can also be written in this form and in terms of pi x where pi x is equal to x minus x0 into x minus x1 up to x minus xn so that pi dash x is the ddx of pi x. Now what are the advantage of using Lagrange's interpolation formula? Note down that it is much superior to the other inter interpolating formula such as the Newton's formula or Starling or Bessel formula because it does not require the construction of a difference table. The formula can be applied both for the equispaced formula 
and also non equispaced formula and also in the cases when xi's are not in order it can be used in any part of the table this polynomial can be used for finding out the formula for numerical integration like than this basic polynomial can also be used to derive other formulas too however the disadvantage of this lagrangian interpolation formula is that it requires a lot of computational work it is computational part is really quite laborious and <laughs> account for the uh, computational part we can find that it requires a total number of 3 and square plus 5 and plus 1 number of arithmetic operation including addition subtraction multiplication and division so if n is equal to say 10 we require about 350 number of arithmetic operations including addition subtraction multiplication division this formula can easily applied uh, to inverse interpolation formula also this is one of the very advantage of this situation let me suggest some problems related to lagrangian polynomial let us given with the table for x x is 1.01 1.05 1.11 you will notice that x is not equally spaced uh, let us try to obtain the value of y at x is equal to 1.03 say at x is equal to 1.17 in the middle of the table or say x is equal to 1.32 at the bottom of the table and observe that x point 32 lies just outside of the given table in that case the problem of interpolation is usually called is a problem of extrapolation uh answer is given along this uh, problem so i request you to find the calculations and obtain the result the result will be accurate up to the last decimal digit now inverse interpolation is a uh, very commonly used problem uh, which can be tackled by using the lagrangian interpolation formula in that case we simply exchange x and y simply exchange the uh, the independent variable x to y and the dependent variable y to x and find out the in formula uh, from the from uh, the lagrangian formula given here just interchange x and y x0 with y zeros and x i and y i is with x i one problem of interpol inverse interpolation may be like this from the given table just we have considered find the value of x for which y is equal to 1.7751 then put it into the put it into this formula put it the value of uh, x i in the formula uh, and you will find that y is equal to 1.7751 for which x is equal to 1.15 uh, given y is equal to 1.7751 we will find that x is equal to 1.15 another important application of lagrangian interpolation formula is the root finding of an equation particularly an equation algebraic equation consider the equation uh, like this x cube minus 3.5157x square plus 9.3454x minus 8.55210 we are required to find a real root of this equation first of all we assume that fx is a well behaved function that is it is free of uh, oscillations in during in the neighborhood of the root and with this assumption uh, we may conclude that if fxi and xi plus 1 uh, the product of these two quantities be positive or negative then there will be no root in between them Uh, on the other hand, if f x i multiplied by f x i plus one is of negative sign, uh, of opposite sign, then there will be exactly one real root within it. Here we see that at x is equal to zero, f x is negative; at x is equal to one, f x is negative; but at x is equal to two, f x is positive. 
According to our assumption, we conclude that there is no root between 0 and 1, but there is exactly one real root uh, between 1 and 2. After that, we redefine the function, uh, we, uh, con uh, we construct a table like this from x is equal to 1 to x is equal to 2, taking uh, a number of intermediate points corresponding values of y is uh, tabled in, uh, in the following table. Now, uh, x in this table, we may take x to be equally spaced or we may take x not to be equally spaced because we will use inverse interpolation formula for due to Lagrange's. Use this table for finding the value of x for which y is equal to 0. So, we put y is equal to 0, we use the inverse interpolation formula, putting y is equal to 0, we shall find the value of x which is comes out to be 1.3157. So, this is a problem to be uh, computed by you, please try to do this because Lagrange's interpolation formula has a good application in finding the roots of an equation, the of course real root of an equation. Lagrange's interpolation formula is also unique in nature because if we consider that there is another function say a psi x, uh, be another Lagrangian polynomial whose degree is less than or equal to n also interpolates uh, the f x i at the same arguments. Then we call g x to be equal to psi x minus phi x which implies that g x is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n and g x i is equal to 0 for i is equal to 0 to n. That is g x is a function of degree less than or equal to n but it vanishes at the n plus 1 distinct points. This is not possible unless g x is identically equal to 0 which implies that psi x and phi x cannot be different. So, we have only one phi x which is the Lagrange's unique interpolation polynomial. Lagrange's polynomial formula is given by y is equal to phi x in the following form which has already been mentioned in our lecture. The coefficients are Li given by Li x is equal to pi x by x minus x i into pi dash x i and observe that if we add Li over i is equal to 0 to n, we will get 1. That is the sum of the Lagrangian coefficients is always unity. This result can be used for checking the uh, Lagrangian polynomial obtained in, uh, in our problem. Uh, this will be taken as a checking formula. Lagrange's polynomial has some disadvantage also because in case when n is greater than or equal to 5, we shall see that Lagrange's polynomial will get oscillatory form. It oscillates within the limit of our interpolation. We shall now go to another kind of interpolation polynomial which is known as Newton's divided difference polynomial. Newton's divided difference polynomial before going into that, uh, let, us find, uh, let us now uh, define what is divided difference operator. Let y is equal to fx be a real value and continuous function of x in a finite region av which is called the region of our interest and let yi is equal to fxi for x is equal to xi, i is equal to 1 to n in the closed interval a v, where xi's are distinct and not necessarily equispaced. We define divided difference of fx for the nodes xi. The first order divided difference is defined in the following manner, f of x1, x2 uh, or rather we should say f of x0, x1 is equal to f of x0 minus f of x1 by x0 minus x1. You can notice that the symbol used f after that we use third bracket right x0 x1. This is the uh, conventionally used uh, 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 used in the in defining the first order different dependence due to uh, Newton. Similarly for the other nodes uh, we have f of x1 x2 which is defined as fx1 minus fx2 by x1 minus x2. You observe that 
f x1 x2 is also equal to f x2 x1. Similarly, for f x i y i uh, or f x i minus 1 x i, the result is same if we take f x i x i minus 1 for i is equal to 1 to n. These are the all first order divided difference which is symmetric in nature. The second order divided difference has been defined as f of x0, x1, x2 in this way and again we find that f of x0, x1, x2 is equal to f of x2, x1, x0. And in general, we, find, we define the third order divided difference and actually the nth order divided difference is been defined by f of x0, x1, x2 up to uh, f x up to x n is defined is like that which is also equal to f of x n x n minus 1 uh, like x2 x1 x0. It may be noted that geometrically f of x1 x, x0 x1 represent the slope of the line segment joining the point x0 f x0 and x1 f x1. The nth order different difference can also be written in this summation notation. Uh, let us move to this point is the summation notation uh, which is written here and notifying that uh, f x0 x1 is equal to f x0 by x0 minus x1 plus f x1 by x1 minus x0. Thus divided difference are symmetric with respect to their arguments and this satisfies all the properties that delta that is the finite forward difference satisfies the laws of commutative law, the distributive law, the index law etc. Divided difference also satisfies all types of uh, um, properties that the forward difference delta operator satisfies. Divided difference of order n of a function like x to the power n, n being a positive integer is 1 if we take nth order divided difference of x to the power n and that of n plus 1th order divided difference of x to the power n we will get a 0. If we have a polynomial say px, nth order polynomial given by a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a n x to the power n. Ais are real constant and we suppose that a n is not equal to 0. It is a nth order difference. If we take nth order difference divided difference of f p x, we will get the constant value a n. And if we take the n plus 1th order of p x, then we will get 0. Now, dear students, please write down the relationship between the forward difference delta and the divided difference delta. Of course, for equispaced exercise, this will be very helpful to you in our future uh, calculations.